Talking wax. Man, that's pretty professional, Oyve. Look how tiny you are, and look how big I am. You know why? Beedy, beedy, beedy. You know that why? Big. <laughs> I got, I got big, big and I'm not. I got a big ego. That's why. That's why. Look at this, <laughs> huh? Welcome to my world. It's a little different tonight, Oyve. <laughs> a little different. Doing this whole crazy, you know, the schmeckling world, and you know, I'm eating a little more. I'm losing a button on my shirt every day. Like every day. This is my favorite shirt. I won't give it up. It's like every button. It's like losing. You know, losing it, except I used to be Abadika. Now I'm like Flabadika. But anyway, everybody, welcome to the show. It's going to be a lot of fun. I see everybody's in the chat. Everybody's getting wild. Everybody's getting crazy. It's Saturday Ooh. night, November 28th, 2020, 732 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Huh? Have you have you subscribed? Have you hit that channel yet? Huh. Please do. Help me out. I'm helping you out. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. We have a great, great show here tonight. Um, my production team is not here, which is my Yoko. She's not here tonight. But tonight we have Rob Roth, legendary, the king of Broadway. He's going to tell some stories about his work. But there's a story I want to know about Truman Capote and Andy Warhol. And that's going to be pretty interesting. But Rob has done a lot of stuff. Um, you and him have a connection, Oive. Mm -hmm. It's Kiss. You love Kiss, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a lot of stuff there, huh? Show us what you got. Well, you know what's funny is one day I'm really going to show you guys everything I have. It's going to mm -hmm. blow your damn minds. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine yeah. what you got there. Let me make you a little bigger. I don't want to be uh, my ego. I'm, I'm equal. All righty. Like that. Yeah, I like that. You got any new? Yeah, I got some. Yeah. There's a great new record out that I just checked out today. He's going to be our second guest along. Cool. Right here. This record you got to check out. Constantine Maroulis. Did I say right? Maroulis. It's Ma Maroulis. Yeah. That's great. The record is great. Actually, it's really cool. Um, my wife was listening to it. And I go, what are you listening to? Because I, I don't like anything. And then I put that on. I'm like, put, is that him? Because I was worried I was going to, he's coming on the show. I was worried he's going to tell him. I go, uh, you know, but I'm like, it's really good. Then I got mad at myself. I go, Man, it's really good. Because you liked it? Because I liked it. And I'm not supposed to like anything. And I really, truly <laughs> like it. No, but it's great. Then I sent it to Rob Ruff. I go, you got to hear this. This record's really good. So it's really good. The link's in my description. Everybody out there, check it out because it's really good. If I say it's good, it's good. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, let me bring him, the producer. Wait, is he here? Uh, he's not there yet. He's looking. He's running. He's waving backstage. We'll bring him. So, Oyve, <laughs> we're going to do a round table. You have a little cool. internet troubles. I'll bring you back. But yeah. anything you want to show, any vinyl you have before we bring the guest on here? Oh, my God. I got a ton of crap. Uh, you do? Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I got something I want to share with you. That got into me. I didn't open it up yet. But if you want to go first, sweetie, go ahead. Huh? Let me uh, go ahead. Go ahead Ed. Ladies and gentlemen, Ed Stasian will be right back in one second. I saw that, Ed. Okay. Backstage over there. All right. Until you find what you got going on, because we got to get the show rolling. I'm going to unbox. I got a gift from Linda Foster. Linda, you're really a sweetheart. And you shouldn't have, but thank you so much, honey. And uh, a big mazel and much love to you. So here we go, Linda. Check it out. Rip this open. Right? Right here. Unbox. That's what the kids are doing on YouTube. They're unboxing. They're unboxing. Oh, wow. Wow. Look what she got me. Mingus, the black saint and the sinner lady on vinyl. That's awesome. Very cool. Awesome Very cool. sauce. Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah. Oh, this Very is cool. so cool. Mwah. Linda, you rock and roll, baby. Thank you so much. All righty, Oive. Don't worry about it. You'll show us later. We're going to get the well, show rolling. I got Alrighty. a lot of stuff, but this one I do want to show. I actually got about 12 new records, but this one I think is really cool. I can't wait to open it and listen to this. It's oh, wow. You got the, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Wow. And uh, one quick one, real quick. This one uh, is a bootleg from uh, Australia, 1980. It's on a double white vinyl. 
Very nice packaging. Sounds great. It's a soundboard recording. Wow. So, That's it. Yeah. This is, you're, ha you're a happy little boy right before Christmas, huh? Oh, yeah. Really quick over here, everybody. Over here, welcome. Um, welcome here. Everybody on Facebook, I want to tell you something. We're signing off before the guests come on. So what you got to do, you take your cute little behind, you leave Facebook, you come to YouTube, you press I like it, subscribe to it, and hell, if you don't like it and I bug you, do me a favor. I'm here to help. So that neighbor that bugs you and you can't stand, well, if you can't stand me, send me to them. Let me bug them as much as I bugged you. So Facebook, we'll see you later, all right? I love you, baby. I love you. Let's say goodbye, huh? That's how I rock and roll, huh? All Bye, right. Facebook. Bye, Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. the man behind Living Color, behind the Ramones. Marshall Crenshaw, the producer, Ed Stasium. Ed, how you doing, buddy? Oh, that's me. I'm, I'm doing good. You know, I uh, went to Costco today. It was a great Saturday at Costco. Was it good? Was always, it good? always good at Costco. You know, picked up some water and some V8. Mm. And uh, they, they were stocked up with everything. If you needed toilet paper, no, nobody's, uh, it's not, nobody's binging down here in toilet. San Diego. They're all, uh, you know, we're stocked. They're all stocked up there, man. Toilet paper is good, man. We got a lot of they dead stacks and stacks of toilet paper and paper towels for days. Yeah, you can never go, never go, never go wrong with too much toilet paper. Just no. don't pick the wrong. Don't get the Kirkland. It's not good on the behind. I, I do not use it the crumbles. No, it I crumbles. don't. Actually, I don't, I don't get my toilet paper at Costco. I get it uh, through Amazon. I have the Cottonelle Ultra with Ultra. Al, with aloe. Ooh, look at this bougie. Gloria found the Bee Gees. The I saw that. red velvet. That is pretty cool, Gloria. Yeah, yeah that's a great, wow. that's a great record. And the, the velvet cover is amazing. I, I saw actually, I saw that Gloria posted that on Facebook, and uh, I actually had that record um, back in the day, and mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine borrowed it, and I never saw it again ever. I just saw it at some vinyl store. I was almost going to pick it up and get. It. I did it, but now that I see Gloria got it, Gloria, you know what? You just got me crazy. I got to go get it. I'm going to go get it. That's what I'm going to do. Um, check what it out. Have, what do you have? What do you have? We were showing a little vinyl. You want to say something? Yeah. No, no. I got to show me vinyl. That's what it's you about. You are the host. You are the yeah. host. Okay. This, this was my mom's disc. One of the wow. first records that she got. It's, we're doing Broadway. So here is the original Broadway cast album of South Pacific. And Very you know, cool. Yeah. It's fantastic. And, uh, you know, it has, you know, some great songs on here. Um, some Enchanted Evening is from this musical. And um, what else is on here that I was thinking of? I've forgotten. But Some Enchanted Evening is the most famous tune yeah. um, from this. Uh, and it's the original Broadway cast very early on. Look, it's falling apart. And you got this, I don't even have it. I don't even have it stored properly. I'm so embarrassed. Wow. But that was the original one that you got, huh? That you held on all those years. That's yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was my mom's. That's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Uh, I did not know that it was adapted from James A. Michener's Pulitzer Prize winning Tales of the South Pacific. He wrote it was a novel. I did I never knew that until I just now. Did you guys know that? No, no, yeah. I didn't know and, that. You know, by uh, Michener, by James yeah. Michener. You know, he was uh, that cat. He um had that big seller with Hawaii, the novel Hawaii and uh, this is Tales of the South Pacific. Some enchanted evening. That's a beautiful one. That's a beautiful you one. A stranger That's before, that, that was made before you were working, huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm always working, huh? All right. It's you time to bring that the one guest on, on. No, we can't. Let's bring the guest on over here. Everybody, this is going to be a lot of fun. We have a lot. Of, it's going to be a round table of good times, everybody. So, Oive, listen, you're a big Kiss fan. I'm going to bring up, since you got that holding up, we're going to bring the director. Mr. Rob Roth, the collector, the man that knows everything. I want to know about this. This is what I want to know about. This Truman Capote, Andy Warhol. I have a little connection with Andy Warhol. Uh, not really, but Rob Rob has more to say than I do. Rob Roth, welcome to the round table, my friend. The big Hello, Marvel. everyone. Rob, Hello. Let me, I'm going to Glad introduce to you. Hi. Yeah. I'm Stefan. Right over here is Oive, but he's gonna he's my Ed McMahon. He's going to be signed off. And down below, we have right there, that's the producer, legendary Ed Stasium, Ramon. I know a lot of your work, Ed. You do. Thank you, Bob. Really, you want to know more? Whatever you want to know, just introduce, shake hands, you guys. I want to see what what Oyve has in the cabinet back there. Oyve. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a jean boot up there. What's that? Let me tell you this, Rob. I have a huge collection that I wish I could fit it all where I'm at right now, but it's a temporary 
situation. Me too. And all my stuff is in storage. But what I Me do too. have here, I have uh, that cabinet right there is full of all the uh, toys from the 70s. Um, it's all the original a coin memorabilia. Yeah. And then panning the room, I've got, you know, some cool awards and some other stuff. And there's some more records over there. But I have, I don't get to show this too often. There's Paul Stanley's fire hat from uh, one of the shows when he did Firehouse and he signed it to me. And uh, later later in life when I'm, I got it signed, but it's one of my favorite pieces. Yeah. Very but I'm, um, I'm about to be 51 and I've been collecting Kiss since I was seven. I've got Ooh. over uh, 700 albums on vinyl, various titles, bootlegs, picture discs, whatever. And yeah. I've got four to five hundred magazines and it's it's a sickness it's a, <laughs> it's, it's a sickness now there's a connection here rob okay because i guess i met rob years ago prior to the alice world but yeah. rob rob you think it's a sickness he's just as sick as you i babe because look at rob right there he's oh, wow. the boot. <laughs> there he is with the boot ah, man. Yeah. i was pretty happy to be holding the boot yeah love the shirt too man the shirt's really good, huh? The shirt's good, yeah. If, if Eric Singer yeah. sees this picture, he's going to want to know what watch is Rob Roth wearing right there. <laughs> he, he knows that it's a Rolex. He's, he's, he, <laughs> he knows, knows all the watches, yeah. He knows That's all the funny. Well, Rob, well, first, so, first of all, I want to say it's an honor for you to be here. And, oh, you gosh, know, I'm just happy to be here. I, with like-minded people, it's awesome. It's it's going to be a lot, a, a, it's a lot of fun. Now, Ed stays in big producer we usually do a vinyl game over here and we we have people match their vinyl and we have the audience vote but tonight because my yoga ono is not here to work it i can't count more past 10 i can't pronounce names right and all that stuff but i figured we had a round table the director right the producer but then we the performer and at the last second I spoke to somebody that knew somebody, a friend of mine, Jamie Adler, knew somebody, and I got to thank him out there. Big shout out because the show Rock of Ages, we're going to bring him to the round table as well. American Idol, Rock of Ages. Jekyll and Hyde, the guy has a new record out right here. I'm gonna, you guys really, and I sent it to you, Rob, today. How fantastic is it? Yeah, really, really good. But I mean, I knew he was really good <laughs> Yeah, but really, before you sent me the record. So, so in our vinyl games, we had... And I'm listening to the Constantine's voice, and it's really great. I'm a big fan of the Partridge family too, and he oh, and he has a David Cassidy too. tone. You are too. When oh, I, I have all the albums on vinyl. I oh would. I, I, I would let me tell you something. Of course. Here's the secret. It's the Partridge family. Are you how could me? you? How could you hate it? I would drive Dee Dee Ramone. I would go on the tour, tour with him in the little van, and I play Partridge family, and he yell at me. It's and it, David Cassidy had the best tone. Well, anyway, the Partridge family. Rachel Bowen from Skid Row was playing at Stasium. Ed has all these great records, but he got his ass kicked from the Partridge family, right, Ed? <laughs> the audience, the audience, the audience voted. They voted, but I, the, but I, I did demand a recount, but that just wasn't going to happen, man. But they wanted, you know they wanted millions of dollars to do a recount. You know, now I don't want to mess his name up, but the guy is such a great singer, a great performer, and you know what? The first time today I spoke to him on the phone, he's a lovely guy. I want to present. Coming to talk in wax right now, we got Constantine Maroulis right here in the audience. That's his new record. I want you guys to check it out. It is fantastic. It has a slight David. And I was going to say David Soul, which another one of my favorite singers are. It has a David Cassidy. Hey, Constantine, welcome to the show, my friend. I want to thank you so much, buddy. Thank you for being here. Thank you, guys. Whoa, so many, yeah, so many you. cool cats in one uh, in one shot here. This this is sort of like a, well, more like the Brady Bunch right now. Instead, yeah, of we're, we're, yeah, we're we're bordering on Brady Bunch now. Yeah, it's 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 very you know, Constantine. We talked a little bit. I didn't want to talk too much with everybody because mm. I want it to be like a date. It's almost like you know, it's, it's going to be our time that we hang out. It's almost like this. It's going to be a casual fun. <laughs> we're going to hang out okay. like this, okay? And uh, we get to know each other. But Constantine, I'm going to introduce you to everybody here. Of course, Rob Roth. You know Rob from Beauty and the Beast. He's a legendary collector right over here. You got a lot of good stuff. Uh, Ed Stasium. I don't know if you know Ed, but Ed, big producer, Ramon, God, Living Color. Yeah, there's Ed Stasium. Well, but yeah, I mean, Living, uh, you know, some of the earlier stuff, of course, I know, you know, I, I I got into later in my life, but Living Color was, uh, you know, that was a big deal for me when I was a kid. And uh, yeah, Li yeah, Living cool. Color, the band, not the show, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I saw, you know, 
I yeah, saw man. them open uh, for the Rolling Stones, believe it or Me not. Me too. Um, oh, Steel I saw Wheels, Where did you, know, you see them? Where did you Shea see them? Stadium, Shea Stadium, Shea Stadium, 1989. Wow. And, uh, yeah. I, I was like, at Dodger Stadium where oh, Axel dude. jumped off the stage. Yeah, that's that, right. it was a crazy night. Uh, was it Dodgers? So, I thought it was the. Uh, oh no! It was the. It was the Coliseum. Coliseum. It was at the, I was at. I was at that show. But Wait, I was. Oh there, my god! I was there on the second day. Uh, it wasn't when Axel did his um, rant. He did a so rant. Guns. Rant. Guns were on that show also, and yeah, Living they, Color. Yeah, Living they, Color, Guns, and the Stones. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. At One Shea, we we had um, we had only um, Living Color. I think there was a first of three that was like. Oh God, was it Till Tuesday or something like that, or one of those bands? Um, yeah. Shit, I can't remember, but definitely not Guns N' Roses. I would have. They were the they were the West Coast openers, I right? Think. I would have definitely known that, but that was incredible. But nice to meet you, and yeah, uh, you, you as well. Yeah, and, yeah. And you have uh, our our Kiss uh, buddy there. I have um, some fun. <laughs> uh, you know, you're just not much older than me, but. You know, Kiss was um, something I also discovered later in life, but I've gotten to know uh, Paul a little bit. Um, you know, he cool. loves he loves Broadway, and he did the Phantom of the Opera in t Toronto, and I know his son Evan, oh. and I know Pam pretty well. And uh, so cool. we, we, honest, we honored um, Kiss, uh, Gene and Paul, at the ASCAP Music uh, Awards uh, a few years ago, and I was... I was, uh, you know, honored with the task of 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 heading this like all star band, and we did this whole tribute to them. So it was pretty cool. Um, oh, very so, cool. So yeah, man. So and I and I'm not at my normal house right now, where I have all my stuff, a lot of my memorabilia, and a lot of my toys. I like toys too, and and even some vinyl pieces. So I I can't show any of my cool shit off right now, but. I'm happy to see all your cool stuff in the background there. That's pretty cool. No, my right robot. <laughs> yeah, he got the robot. Look, Constantine already got a question right there, and I asked sure. the same question before. He like, right there, Constantine. Is that a fugly hat right there? I have. Help. I don't even have my cool Kardashian light or anything right now. Um, it is a fugly hat. It That's is fugly. Right. I, I dig it. I, I didn't cut my hair. It's just man bunning in the back there. It's today was. Uh, <laughs> You know, just like I, I wanted to get a lot of things done, I didn't get a lot of things. You didn't done. get it done, huh? When I, I was spoke just to you eating <laughs> like leftovers with my kid. We were watching. She's nine years old, and now she's discovering Twilight. Like ten, twelve years later, wow. um, so I had to sit through like two of those films with her today, which was yeah. brutal. Um, <laughs> brutal. <laughs> you know, not great. And I love Pattinson. I'm excited for uh, the Batman, but um, <laughs> those movies are just tough to watch when you're not nine hey. years old. Um, <laughs> so it was one of those days. So yeah, the Fugly Hat came out uh, when we were out with Steven Adler. Uh, I met I met that cat. So uh, he sent me like 14 hats. So I love them. Yeah, that's very no. They're cool hats. Yeah, I got. Um, I have a quiet moment right now, and I was telling Rob because it's actually pretty nice. My wife took my daughter they went to look at some christmas lights and i'm i'm in kind of in well she's not here I, i'm kind of like enjoying the moment yeah it's really nice it's yeah, nice do. i don't have a screaming five-year-old right now what's that you don't have to whisper i know but i'm i'm, I'm <laughs> jewish i'm jewish and paranoid come on i got this i got this on my desk to never forget <laughs> left over here but man you know what this is a lot of fun there's a lot of stuff to talk about i don't know where to begin but Rob, you, Hi. there's a connection here, okay? First of all, there's a connection with all of us over here. Constantine Bay Ridge, Canarsie, I was telling him from, originally from Canarsie. Big Lemoore's, like, that was my thing. Lemoore's in Brooklyn. Do you ever went there, Rob, the Lemoore's in Brooklyn? No. Never uh -huh. checked it out, huh? I think I've only been to Brooklyn twice. Really? It's like really? going to Europe. <laughs> really? 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 Well, 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 I got to see that, I, the Metal Massacre weekend. It was Metallica, Wasp, Armored Saint. And wow. That was at Lamore's in Brooklyn. Then I was working at Circus Magazine. And then I got a job, the Village Voice. I had the long hair. I had the look, but I didn't have the talent. So I was a messenger boy. So at the time, Jerry Rothberg, the owner of Circus, I was the errand boy. But he started to do a men's fashion magazine about 1986, 87. And uh, with Corey Levington. So 
he he did a, a, a magazine called um men's guide to fashion mgf so i'd answer the phone circus mgf anyway the errand boy for circus magazine was ken Leyland, and he was andy Warhol's assistant was with andy when he passed it was you know his errand boy was winning when he passed now you have something over here that i want to talk about really quick okay um i wrote a play my first play uh it's called warhol capote mm -hmm. and this is a true story in 1978 andy and truman got together in new york city uh and decided to write a broadway play for real and Andy said, Truman, can't I just tape you? And can't the tapes edited be the play? And I found the tapes. Wow. Uh, no one's ever heard them before. I, I, I'm just not, I'm the only person in the world that's ever heard them. Wow. Uh, and on the tapes, wow. they talk about writing a play and what they're going to do. And they talk about their plan. And so I just executed the piece of art that they started working on. So I found 59 90 minute cassettes. Um, it's not just them, uh, you know, sometimes it's them at a party or them at dinner with a lot of people. But, um, so I created this play that's from my imagination, except every single word of it, they said, uh, and it opened at uh, American Repertory Theater in Cambridge, uh, about 18 months ago. And we were just casting it for Broadway or the West end when COVID hit. Ugh. And now we have a different idea the producers. One of the producers is Craig Kalman, who's the CEO of Atlantic Records and a, a collector buddy yeah. of mine too. Uh, and we're gonna um, shoot it uh, as a play on a sound stage for, I hope for the movies or streaming. So we're starting to cast that right now, but it's a cool thing. Um, I've been working on it for about 10 years uh it took a long time to actually find out if there were tapes and then to access the tapes and then to get the rights from the two estates to write a play um but i did and i'm really proud of it and uh, i'm excited for the world to hear their genius because they were two geniuses of the 20th century and uh in private conversation um they talk about everything from you know doing cocaine to what it feels like to be a genius wow um, and they were also pretty sad, actually. Um, you know, they weren't the happiest two guys ever. I think that they thought that fame was going to fix it. Um, and it just made it worse. It just, they just were more and more isolated by it. But uh, they're also hilarious. <laughs> really, really funny. What, so, what was the, the, the year around that this was? Uh, 1978, the summer of 78. Wow, amazing. The tapes, they, that's when andy's diaries say they start this is how this all started I, I was on a forced onto a gay cruise by my boyfriend now he's my husband but 10 years ago or 12 years ago rosie Go o'donnell was, yeah well <laughs> rosie o'donnell is a friend of ours and she invited us on one of her gay family cruises things which is a great thing for gay people to bring their children and all that but I didn't want to be around children trapped on a boat. Forget it. You know, I, I, I just said no, no, thank you. And then my husband Patrick said, "Oh, you know, I can really study." He was studying to be a psychologist, and he said, "I could use a week on the boat, you know, to really cram for the mm -hmm. state boards." Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went begrudgingly on this thing, and I didn't leave the the room. I mean, I didn't want to be around the children, so I bought an Andy Warhol Diaries, a fresh copy, with me which I had read 10 times before this. And if you haven't read Andy Warhol Diaries, go to Amazon right now, buy it. It's the balls, it's so good. Uh, and in the diaries, he says one day, went to Truman's apartment, got six good tapes for the play. And that's what started this whole saga for me. Um, and uh, the first play that I've written and, uh, I'm really, I, I'm excited. So 78, that was, was that around the time that Truman was in that movie? Like the, 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 with the, the murder? A little bit after. It was after. called Murder by Death. That was in murder 75. By death. Yes. Yeah. I remember that movie. Exactly. Seen in the theater. I love Murder by Death. Great. It was a great film. Um, wow, what a crazy so summer uh, or, you know, that is in New York City too. I think, uh, what the, well, the next summer is the summer of Sam, right? Summer. No, summer before was it was seventy seven. Summer of summer, okay, yeah, and then the Yankees are in the World Series, and Led uh, Zeppelin played the Garden for six uh, nights in seventy seven. So much going on, yeah. That's that's interesting. Hey, Rob, is it is it a two person? Yeah, play? Uh -huh. yeah, that's, that's really it. cool. I could see yeah, that no. sort of Frost Nixon, but like yeah. you know, it's so 
it, it's so interesting. And by the way, um, with all the, you know, that's happening in the world, you know, that's mm -hmm. a play that can get done, you know, yeah. too, because, um, you know, it's not like I'm, well, I have I'm, 50 I'm, people in the show and uh, <laughs> there's a giant <laughs> set. I'm doing one of those too. We're, we're yeah. doing a brand new production of Beauty and the Beast. Uh, cool. I'm, this is crazy. I'm directing my own revival, which what? I think is maybe the first time that this has happened. I can't swear to that, but I think so. And well, if uh, you're so gonna, if, when they reinvent it, yeah, they don't. It, sometimes a, a director will will do the revival, but pretty much restage the same version yeah. of the show. No, this is know, complete. Not, the technology has changed so right. completely since 1994 when uh, we did the first one that I wanted to take advantage of all the technology and illusions and all that stuff, and cool. um, also new dance arrangements so that we can have a fresh. Look at Alan Menken's score uh, with with him, of course, uh, and it's opening knock wood in Leicester, England, on June eighth. And oh, I just wow. finished casting it. I found an amazing cast, crazy, yeah. like I can't believe it, uh, and I'm excited. So it's I'm I'm working on a little small play and this giant big musical, um, and I'm not directing my own play, by the way. Uh, Michael Mayer is directing it. Wow. Um, there you and go. that was the best. No, yeah, that was the best decision I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> to to step back and have a partner, you know, I, I thought, oh my god, you know, I'm going to be by myself in the back of a West End or Broadway theater with my first play. Mm, that didn't seem smart. <laughs> yeah. And I love Michael's work, and I love Michael, uh, and he was really helped me focus the play and jig it jigger it around. Um, so it was a really successful and fun. Collaboration. Can I tell you a story, Constantine, about seeing you in um, in Rock of Ages? Sure, sure. So this is name drop, but Steve Miller is one of my best friends, guitar Steve Miller. Mm -hmm. And so Steve Miller and I went to go see Rock of Ages, right? Because it has all these classic songs in it. And I, I would say in the first 10 minutes of Rock of Ages, it was so corny. <laughs> that I didn't know that I'd even make it to 15 minutes. <laughs> and then you came out and the whole thing just changed. And by the end, we were, we, we ha were holding our lighters up. We were, I mean, I was way into it and then brought other friends to see you in it. Um, well, thank you. you. So, thank you for saying so that, good. Rob. You oh, know, so good. I, I, I grew up as an actor. I graduated a prestigious conservatory all long before idol i was you right. know i was in rent and all that even before idol and all that so you know acting and uh the theater were always such a passion of mine obviously rock and roll so when that opportunity came along to be able to create a show like that and, and yeah. originate a role um i think it probably their first instinct was for me to play that sort of cartoon uh rock star character right. but it was actually Kristen, uh, who was also totally nominated for Best Director, uh, who said, no, you're you're my Drew, and it's going to be grounded. It's going to be real. You you have to be at the heart of this show. Otherwise, you were. we can't have everything else exist. You know, if, if, if we don't have something grounded underneath all of this sort of caricature and sort of, you know... Um, cartoon like yeah. characters um then it just doesn't work and uh so that really was a focus from the very beginning so i'm i'm so happy that you you got that and you know to be recognized uh <laughs> really by my, got it by my peers uh for you know best actor tony and all that was cool and all that but uh yeah you know iconic show certainly it lives on all over the world we're we're working on a a stream uh special concert uh right now possibly you know for one of the big streaming uh services and uh but you know covid it 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 sucks it hurts you know we we lost our dear friend nick cordero who was part of the rock yeah. of ages family you know along the way here and uh there's not a day that goes by that i i don't think about him but you know we're Work is starting to creep back into some film and TV stuff. You know, there was an Apple TV thing I put on tape the other day. There's, so there's some things like that coming back. But I do worry about our, our beautiful theater community. Um, I guess, you know, they're saying summer. But, you know, I really think and, and even live, you know, concerts and stuff. Uh, I think it's 
it's going to be more like a year away, you know, but we'll, but we'll see, you know, we'll, we'll hope for the best and maybe this vaccine uh, is the real deal. And mm-hmm. honestly, sign me the fuck up. I'll give me the shot. Give me the me shot. Me too, man. Give me yeah. the shot right now. Right in the Jekyll <laughs> right. and Hyde, like in the jugular. The Jekyll, <laughs> it's funny you mentioned the Jekyll and Hyde because over here, you know what? Constantly, I didn't know that you did Broadway before. You know, I thought you were uh, first a rock singer, then later, yeah. on, you know. I, I think that's wow. sort of, in, you know, people's instinct, you know. Oh, they, and remember when I was on Idol, like the entire world was watching it then. It was 25 million people a night. It was, you know, it was crazy. It was still yeah. like when we look forward to, and people are going to be like, I didn't watch that shit. But it's like, uh, you watched. I know you did. And, uh, <laughs> I watched and, it. And, and, I watched you know, it. It was like the My end. My parents watched it. My parents yeah, were well, way into you. Yeah, well, that was the thing. You. It was like for the whole they family. They were way into you. Yeah, I'm, I'm big. I'm big with the seniors. So I. Uh, um, Seriously, you were. And, and, uh, and, you know, it was just like, it was it's such a great time still where where the whole family could watch a show and still mm. circle around the tv and talk about it around the water cooler the next day and stuff like that so you mentioned partridge family i uh you know i, I was the first sort of man like on the show i was 28 29 years old it, it mm-hmm. up the age limit so uh, all of a sudden i realized i had this like big adult female audience they had never had that before it was season four and whatnot so we we tried to play into it a bit and remember you couldn't clear a lot of songs back then i wanted to do big rock stuff like every week and they're like yeah that we can't clear that wow. um and even Aerosmith i mean i'm gave, sorry could you just be clear for me what that means they couldn't pay for the rights or the bands wouldn't say yes both both yeah, um okay. even though they were printing zillions of dollars yeah it was still early on even season one two three it was predominantly sugar pie honey bunch and stuff like yeah. that right? right um and then you know you had me and carrie underwood and and some rockers and things happening in season three and really the whole world kind of watching and you, you started to see as the season went on um they were shooting down songs left and right um because i you know someone like bon jovi is like i don't want them doing my song and then one week I did Bohemian Rhapsody on the show and everyone thought I was crazy. And then it was the first time you really saw like a song have a digital impact and spike the original, right. the original record. It, it, it was all over the place, you know, and uh, I ended up doing a, a Queen record with um, all these great people uh, um, for, for Hollywood records. Uh, me, Gavin DeGraw. Los Lobos, Josh Stone, we did this Killer Queen tribute and I got to meet Brian and all of them. But um, then artists started to be like, so even if they suck, it's good because my song gets, you know, all this traction again. Remember, it's like the beginning of the digital iTunes thing is like they were people were trying to figure it out like daily, like what was what you could and couldn't do. So. So no, that you couldn't clear everything, and uh, but I picked uh, a Partridge Family song out of nowhere. Cool. Kind of which kinda, song? Well, I did. I think I love you. Ooh, yes, great. And, uh, it was. A I mean, that's huge, a great tune. Those Wes Farrell tunes are they're yes. great. Was it? They're I th- or so did Neil Neil Diamond didn't write that one? Right? No, that no. wasn't. Uh, Wes Farrell. I feel like it was Wes Farrell. My right. It was Wes yeah. You're right. And you're it's right. An yeah, interesting Farrell. melody. My and- lonely homosexual childhood in my bedroom, p- dreaming of David Cassidy, looking at the credits. That's why. That's why I know who <laughs> Wes Farrell. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> it's such a cool, weird song. And uh, Johnson, so, excuse me. Yeah. Um, what what year was that? God, that was like 2005, 2006. That, that far, that long ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very long time. So then, right. you know, Rock of Ages opens 2009 on Broadway. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, and it was uh Did it come from time. somewhere, Constantine? <laughs> yeah, Rock of Ages started originally in L.A., sort of as like a nightclub act, essentially. Yeah. Um, uh, sort of improv 80s kind of winking kind of uh musical event um and they were doing it at this like russian nightclub where they had to like be out of there by 10 o'clock because it turned into like (laughs) (laughs) like a you know 
and with like you know the whole shebang um so <laughs> and then it really just grew it came to new york i remember they approached me shortly after my time on american idol i met them up at caa you know it was a crazy time in my life and i was like call me when you get to new york you know right. uh, i was developing a tv show and and all of this stuff was going on touring and stuff and so i saw a reading of it in new york i i wasn't in it the cast was all wrong and you know i met them and they put the right cast together in the right room with the young creatives and we really built the thing together in a matter of a few weeks um we opened off broadway no one knew what the hell it was and the word of mouth just built and uh sure. and and yeah you know we opened on broadway to five tony nominations and you know huge reviews and and uh sort of um you know, changed really the face of uh, what Broadway can be and bringing in an audience that's not your traditional theater audience. Guys, like maybe our KISS fan friend there, uh, who probably has never seen a Broadway show, um, all of a sudden may be interested in coming to see what, what Broadway can be, yeah. obviously with the songs, but, um, you know, seeing the relationship, seeing the spectacle, seeing the beautiful community, community that it can be and then maybe he goes and sees another show but i don't think you have you know um book of mormon that breaks the mold or even hamilton um without a without a rock of ages so uh yeah. pretty mm -hmm. proud yeah, uh, moment in my life yeah a great moment yeah. of your life you know it's funny you mentioned that because growing up now you know i, I am i'm doing you know five-year-old here i am 53 <laughs> and this whole whole thing is all crazy the world right now is shut down as a kid i grew up in, in, in canarsie brooklyn i remember taking the bus in manhattan first broadway show i saw around 78 79 beatlemania with mitch weissman oh, in it right who's a friend of the show and i and i remember the commercial as a kid beatlemania that, and when that came out that was like i was like oh my god and then from there my mom took me to see greece i saw off Broadway, The Passion of Dracula, which at the Cherry Lane Theater, one of my favorite shows, I remember that exactly. Off Broadway, um, there was a Dr Dracula first role, Raul Julia, and I remember my cousin jumping on stage getting his cuffling. I have the programs, Crucifer of Blood, Death Trap with Farley Granger in it. It's a great play. That's great insane. play. That's really good. It was one of my favorites, and it's such the memories of a, as a child in the seventies, growing and seeing these shows. It really was a big part of my life, and. Just I don't art. know much about Beatlemania. The uh, so it was like a review, or what? it was the Beatles was all alive. So it's about yeah. So picture this: they just broke up around. I think Rob, you might know better. They, they broke up in six in nineteen seventy, really. And yeah, they broke up, but the 70. show was like seventy eight, seventy nine. Yeah, and, then, and they, it was, sued. <laughs> they, they sued. They sued to stop. I was going to say that doesn't feel like a Beatles sort of sanctioned. It was, uh, yeah. it was Jules Fisher, the fabulous Broadway and rock lighting designer it was his i think it was his concept um and it, it had a lot of cool visuals yeah if you remember yeah uh, the the beatles screen. sued but they lost somehow because wow. they didn't own the songs alan klein owned the songs alan right, klein. right. Yeah. right? Uh, alan klein who owns a lot of the still owns all the early stone stuff Interesting. Yeah. yeah and michael jackson had some of the beatles catalog as well if i recall Later, I later. think he bought later. it. In later, 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 right? yeah. But it was yeah. definitely, it was like almost like the first, you know, you have the metal school and all the, all the tribute acts, but it was the first one of, of you know, the tribute before tribute was in style. And it, they had the JFK that screened behind them and the show when JFK got shot and then the lights would come down and it's the Beatles, Ed Sullivan ever. And they would go all the way through Sgt. Pepper, change costumes, which was, it was, it was a fabulous yeah, show. Very cool yeah, idea. It was a great, great idea. But um, that was the, that was my introduction. Went to Garden Theater it was at, and then I think it, it lasted and then Cats took over at us. Or I something think so, like yeah. That. yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah, they had a long, I, I don't know. I mean, I love, you know, Andrew Lloyd Webber, but Cats is just brutal, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, took, was... I took Milena to the revival a few years ago, and I knew some of the most beautiful dancers you could ever yeah. imagine, boys and girls and everything. And uh, they were in it. You know, they, they brought in real ballet dancers and uh, from ABT and everything. But it just... 
it just didn't work. I'm like, yeah. what the hell is going on? I get like, And in the eighties, it was so iconic. Cause it's funny the wall street journal ran this um, interesting piece about um, Broadway and, and how, you know, the, uh, the potential comeback that it can make and needs to make if it's to survive and, and all the errors that it's, it has bounced back from. And after, you know, you, you had Rodgers and Hammerstein, Hammerstein uh, uh, after World War II with Oklahoma and a massive mm. boom of Broadway. And then you had, um, you know, sort of the mid-century boom of, uh, you know, a bunch of shows like started have like the Jesus Christ Superstar. What, you know, shows taking it out. And then you had, you know, Times Square totally change. You had that would be that would in. be me. Yeah, that would be and, 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 uh, in in yeah. the 80s, and you know, it started getting crazy. And you remember the commercials they were they were running? We love New York, and they had totally. like, cats and all the Broadway shows. And then there was that next boom, and then you had Phantom and Les Mis, and you know, so it'll be interesting to see where it goes. But Cats was so iconic to me as a kid, it, yeah, like yeah. just from the commercials. The commercials, you know, like, huge alone, you know. You, you, huge. When you were a kid, Constantine, what, what, what did you go see as a kid? Your family take you to the shows and all that as a child um, growing up? Yeah, we left the city. Uh, I was about five years old. We moved to North Jersey to, uh, you know, it's a beautiful area. Frankly, Brooklyn, you know, it was tough. You know, it was a tough time in the late 70s, early 80s there. And it's certainly not the Brooklyn that it is now. And mm -hmm. they wanted a better uh, life for us, better school system and whatnot. So they moved us to this very affluent town in New Jersey and Bergen County. There's a great Greek church here. And, uh, you know, my brother and sister, are, I just idolize. They're they're much older than me. They don't like me saying that. But um, <laughs> they're like 10 and 11 years older. My brother was is a prolific uh, artist and performer. I was telling you about him a little bit. Maybe you'll have him on sometime. But vi yeah. we're very, very different. Ethan, Ethan Marulis, like Nathan, but Ethan Marulis. And uh, I just worshipped him. He was putting out records and... Uh, he did shows in school. He did West Side Story uh, oh, wow. when I was a kid, and he was playing Bernardo, and it was so real to me because we used to watch the movie as as a family. It was like one of the only real family memories I had of the five of us, you know, together. You know, um, before my brother moved out of the house. I mean, he's eleven years older than me. I'm, you know, I was six years old. He's seventeen, and he was gone. Um, and, uh, so West Side Story, the film was huge for me as a kid, seeing my brother perform my sister in shows. Uh, my father took us to Annie, but I was so young, but I do remember it. You know, I remember the kids and I remember daddy Warbox's bald head and, 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 you know, that the sound that the kids make in unison, you know, there's just such a distinct sound that they make on a stage and then of course the film came so there were some early memories like that and I was always a singer and I played trumpet um, but I was very shy and I had a, a stage fright so mm -hmm. I played sports growing mm -hmm. up and then uh, kind of later got into performing in front of people in a comfortable way and uh, and then you know that, that was it. I was bit, I was bit by the bug, bit the, the you know, bug. and yeah, then we started, you know, standing in front of a band by freshman year in high school, like, and girls started showing up to our rehearsals and you're like, this is pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> sure. uh, you know, and, um, plugging into like a guitar amp, or, you know, the, the microphone. Um, and, uh, you know, I was into the, all kinds of music, Grateful Dead and all the classic rock as well. And, and then the, all the show music. So I was kind of had the yeah. split yeah. personality. So I have the exact same thing. I'm split personality. Yeah. Show tune boy and, you know, British classic rock. Yeah. Cool. Isn't that you know, fun? My thing. Yep. Well, How about the radio station? It's theatrical, though. Yeah. All that yeah. Stuff is so oh, yeah, of course. You know, so. the, uh, I invited uh, Alice Cooper and Shep Gordon to the original production of Beauty and the Beast. And afterwards, they said to me, Oh, we totally see the Alice influence all through this. And I'm like, <laughs> really? You do? And they were like, yeah. Makeup, illusions, stage fog, lighting, magic. Yep, totally Alice Cooper. I totally <laughs> ripped it. 
million dollar babies tour. <laughs> <laughs> and it was yeah. good because I went on to direct five Alice tours. So I've had a long association with wow. them. Uh, but it was like in, in me because I yeah. loved it so much and still love it so much. You yeah. know, uh, like uh, we were saying about moving to New Jersey, I have to move to New Jersey for my stuff. Like it's, it's all in storage. I have 7,000 posters. Oh gosh. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's, so it's, so it's, cool. I love them. I, yeah, I, I got, Oh yeah. I got I'm obsessed. 200 and I'm, I think I have, a, I have a lot, you know? So oh, it's uh, like, I started, uh, when I was 14, the first thing I got was Pink Floyd animals stand up display from the EJ Corvettes oh in Paramus, New Jersey. That's and amazing. that's right. And that started it. I've been collecting since then. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh, there I oh, am. Look at that. Wow. At that, oh, huh? Wow. Oh, that yeah, there's a lot of good stuff on that wall. That and that's Bowie the original. Oh, these Bowie. are all original posters. Yeah, all linen mounted. Wow. Oh, beautiful, man. Look at that. Yeah. That's amazing. Alice comes over and signs everything. <laughs> does he really? Oh, that's excellent. Oh, that's excellent, man. <laughs> excellent, my, man. My brother worked at the Crazy Eddie in uh, Oh, Paranus. yeah. Uh, so really? I don't know the yeah. other place, but I wonder if they existed at the same time because Paramus, I forget. Yeah, they did. Okay. Yeah, EJ Corbett's was a chain of stores across the Northeast, anyway. And really? they had major record department. I mean, mm -hmm. big, like a lot of floor space. And every Tuesday was record release day was on Tuesday in the 70s, not Friday. And uh, the, the reps would come from New York with all the promo stuff. And they put up all the posters and mobiles and all that stuff. And I just started going after school on Tuesdays and going, can I please have one? You know, can I have a oh like, Yeah. Amazing. Uh, and that started it. And then I'm just obsessed. So I have a book, a uh, coffee table book, that's about 1,500 pieces uh, called The Art of Classic Rock um, that Elton wrote the forward and Alice wrote the afterward or vice versa, which way. Did there she is. Mm -hmm. That's my mm -hmm. husband. Oh, that's, that's great. Uh, Your husband and Elton John. Wow, that's a great picture. Great I picture. love him. Yeah, great picture. Uh, he was great on Howard Stern the other day. He did a, a pretty in-depth interview. Uh, um, I don't oh, know I'm going to go find that. Oh, yeah. It's basically last week. Um, it, it's oh, awesome. You know, I think we're starting to see, you know, guys like Elton and, and, and Paul McCartney, like they mm – -hmm. They, opening maybe up. they see the uh, yeah they're opening up like they never have you know they're mm -hmm. you see paul mccartney did like all the late night shows he's doing like skits and things and he's uh i, I don't know he just seems so open about talking oh, yeah. about stories I don't know that if i'm allowed never... to plug a friend's record, yeah check yes. out jewel box elton john jewel box I, it's taken me about 10 days to get through it it's eight uh cds and not or nine lps Wow. with a beautiful book where he talks about each track and it's really amazing you That's have it by you right now rob you have it's it by you, you know demo? i don't have it by me okay it's all yeah. the demo oh you know i do can i go get it yeah go yeah. get it i'll, I'll bring yeah. it back in there let go get it I'll yeah. bring it. this yeah. is a good thing about this this is i like sharing the, the show and tell stuff but yeah he look at the wall really quick look at this kind of thing it's pretty incredible That's amazing I, I mean, he didn't want to send me these pictures, but I go, send me what you got. And then we got to ask him about Jimmy Page at his house. There's yeah, a story here, you know, cool. but look at, I mean, it's just great stuff, man. I, I'm really having a great time with this. And, and thanks again for coming on. And oh, thanks everybody. Sure. Everybody in the chat, thank you there. I, I try to get to your questions and all that, but there's so much going on here. Here's Rob coming right back. Let's check out what he has. Okay. I oh, think wow. Elton Let's... was promoting that on he, Howard he Stern. Must have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, just, wow. just like the out. demos Fantastic. and such. The demos. Yeah, all the, the all that. Yeah. Before he was Elton John, like Reg Dwight demos, wow. and then a lot of demos from like Tumbleweed Connection, Madman Across the Water. Uh, uh, wow. Insane. Really, <laughs> really amazing. Yeah, wow. did, so did you show the picture of Jimmy Page while I was out of the room? I did. Yeah. I went behind your back because right. you really, you know, yeah. he he's humble. I'm a little shy about it. He's, he's the most shyest guy, but you, you be proud. You did so much great stuff, and these people it was would a love crazy to see day. it. I woke up. The phone rang at 9.20 in the morning. That is dawn. Yeah. And it was Paul Stanley's Kiss's head of security. Danny? Um, was it Danny? Danny, yeah, Danny yeah, Francis. Okay. Mm -hmm. He said, hey, I'm up the block at Mandarin Oriental with Jimmy Page. Can we come over? And I'm like, <laughs> come uh, on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. But, I mean, it was just surreal. And then 20 minutes later, they were at my door. Oh. Um, and I have a lot of really <laughs> cool uh, – 
one of a kind Zeppelin things that I got from my friend um, Storm Thorgerson, who designed was Hypnosis. Yeah, I know. I know. And I was very, he's passed away now, but I, yeah. I was very, very close to him, dear friend of mine. And so he let me buy over a decade of knowing him all this Led Zeppelin stuff um, that he kept saying, why do you care about this? This is like the thing that went into making the album art, but the album art is the art. And I said, you know, Storm, you don't have to understand. I just have to have it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, that's, come on. <laughs> and yeah. so, the process. okay, so I'm gonna, the process. I'm gonna show something that I've, I'm shy about it, but because Jimmy Page saw this, I can show it now. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, wow. This is the object. Yeah, the object. Yep. For presence on the cover of presence. Yep. But it's not the object that the limited edition ones that are stamped and say Led Zeppelin. It's one of the four objects that they shot the album covers with. Oh shit. Um, and uh, so this is crazy. This is my, I value this more than my own husband. Sorry, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we, go. Oh, we don't want to break up any marriages here. <laughs> uh, and Jimmy Page, uh, it was, it's in my bedroom normally. And uh, he came in and said, this is the rarest Led Zeppelin thing there is. Can I, can I pick it up? I'm like, yes, you can. You can do whatever you want, oh, <laughs> except gosh. leave the apartment with it, which I think he wanted to. Uh, it was great. It was a great day for me to meet a hero like that. He's the nicest man. Oh, my God. And I had a lot of stuff that he'd never seen. Um, and I said, didn't they show this to you? And he said, if it was in the 70s, I wouldn't have been present enough to maybe be aware of it at the time, you know? Wow. Was that um, when you met him? Was that that based on the way he have he has his hair back? It looks like was that when he was playing with the black crows a bit and all of that? No, a little bit after that, that. A little after yeah. that, yeah. That was pretty. Yeah, cool it would have been like was, yes, it was cool. two thousand and ten, maybe two thousand. It's been okay. ten years that I've known him. Um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, it was a really pretty weird and fantastic day, and it was fun to show him Led Zeppelin stuff that he hadn't seen. Hmm. You know, he was like, wait a minute, what is this? Where is this from? You know, which was really kind of cool. Wow. Wow. That's pretty yep. cool. You know, I, it was like geek dream. Did he come to the Kiss show too? Did Jimmy go to the Kiss? You know, he, I, you know I don't think he came to the, the, he didn't come to the Kiss show that I directed uh, or that I was the creative. Uh, uh -huh. I'm going to take that back. I did not direct it. It's, it's directed by um, Robert Long, but I'm the creative consultant for Kiss on this farewell tour. Uh, he didn't come in London, but he's been to see Kiss more than once, um, and it's very close with Paul. Yeah, that's you and Paul right there. Uh, I, I, I want to ask you a personal question, and let's be honest. Sure. You're not, you're finally watching, Eric Singer. What do you really, truly think <laughs> what about a that guy? Dick. He is a dick, right? There he is. There he is. There he is. Eric Singer. <laughs> hey, Eric. <laughs> What's up, Rob? I want Constantine. This is, is that Eric your house? Singer. Are, are you in your I new secret tonight. location? What up, buddy? Are you um, in your secret location? No, I'm at your I new house. Know. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. The secret, the secret location. So good so evening, Eric. Eric. Big. Hi, Eric. Ed. How are you? Good. Real good, hey, man. Stephanie. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Rob, to clarify, if Jimmy Page only came to one Kiss show. Okay. One I've just show. seen a hundred pictures of it. <laughs> in exactly, London. Yeah. And I gave hey, a pair yeah, of Eric, I just saw you. I have a picture of me. I have a picture of me standing there where I gave him some drumsticks. I think he's pointing them at me or something like that. But Rob, um, it was in fact the same night. What's his name uh, came to the show and I got to meet him, Dave Clark from the Dave Clark Five. The wow, drummer. cool. Wow. He he was doing some kind of documentary. You know, he owns all the rights to like the great 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 whistle test and all that. He owns all those masters. Wow. So, yeah, man. I, I don't know how he got them, but he's got them. So he's like, I the, want to go to see, see that stuff. stuff. I don't know if he's. Hey, the, Eric, I'm going to plug something that you just did. I just heard, um, I think I'm allowed to say this, uh, the Paul Stanley Soul Station stuff. It's fucking, can I say that? Yeah, it's, it's, fan, it's fantastic, Eric. It's so good. Oh, you heard it all? Yeah, I've heard it all. And I've even seen a, uh, an edit of a video that you all look killer in. But it's the music is really so shockingly good. I think the originals are surprising good. Is what I'm surprised about the original songs. Yeah, yeah, his original. The, they're really good. 
Yeah, I think, you yeah, know, I'm it's excited for that. Thank, thank you, but you should thank Paul. I just played drums, so I didn't really do anything. Yeah, you but, play drums <laughs> like you do. Great, though. <laughs> but, but, no, no, I mean, I, you know, I just came in and did whatever I was supposed to do. But one thing I was surprised about, as we went along, Paul, like, wrote one song. And then it's like, oh, that's pretty good. You know, I'm surprised that, he, you know, because usually if you're a good songwriter, you can kind of figure your way to write kind of in a style of a lot of different genres, if you will. Right. But every time he wrote an original song and brought another one in, it was better. And then I'd say, I you know, I said, and I kept kind of encouraging him. I'm not taking credit. I'm just saying I was kind of nudging him. I said, you know, Paul, I think you should write more songs because they keep getting better. They really did. So I really doing, agree with you. Absolutely, they did. He ended up doing five original songs and nine covers. I don't know what's going to end up on the final thing. I have no idea. I do, but I'm not telling you. Oh, you know, exactly. see, so you know more than, than Eric knows. Everybody knows, knows everybody, everybody knows more than me in a kiss camp, right, Rob? Always. That's fine. Oh. That's, Constantine, who wrote on your on your new record, which Eric, it is great. I actually uh -huh. sent it to Rob earlier. Who, who did you do the writing on this? I didn't I didn't read the crowd. I was just listening to it today. Yeah, I wrote I wrote all the songs or or co wrote. The wow, songs. fantastic! I, uh, thanks. Yeah, I um actually the single. All about you's been getting uh, its full airplay right now uh, at Sirius um, on a bunch of channels, uh, mainly Velvet and Volume and the Pulse have been playing the single All About You. Again, I'm sorry, I, I'm I have like the worst lighting in here right now, but no, it's um, all good. Okay, normally, I won't put I'm the like, camera. Like, really bad too. Normally, I'm like Eric has you know, Ed. You have the best lighting. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've got the blue glasses on, so it does this no matter what. It's the blue tint in my glasses. I told no, you to put the makeup good. and the boots on before you come I was, on here. Yeah, they're, they're not here. I told someone one day I'm going to do it, but they're, they're not here right now. Hey, Rob, I saw you already showed him. I was watching. You showed him the pre the presents. Uh, I did. Thing. I is that broke cool? Down. Yeah. He asked me to show it. It's it's the whole thing is so crazy that I know that I knew Storm Thorgerson, and he loved me, and I loved him dearly. He saw it when I, it was on a bookshelf in his studio, like with books against it. And I thought it was one of the thousand um, numbered objects that they made for promotion, which they never used. So they're very collectible. I probably have eight of them. And I wanted another one. I thought, oh, yeah, I'll have nine, you know. And so I said, Storm, can I go up and get a ladder and climb up there? And he went, yeah, go get it. So I climbed up the ladder. And as I got close to it, I saw that the finish of this was different than the other ones. And then it didn't have Led Zeppelin presence, the object stamped into the base of it. And so I said, Storm, what is this? Kind of hoping against hope he was going to tell me it was the object. And he went, oh, yeah, that's the object, I guess. Why do you care about that? Wow. <laughs> like, Storm. Wow. Wow. You, <laughs> Rob, you have to do like sure. I'm sure you, you you've thought of it. I mean, uh, you got to do like a, a an exhibition or something at, at an exhibit yeah, yeah. at some point. Um, oh you know, my God. I, I've just went for the past ten years. All the John Varvato stores, or mm -hmm. almost all of them, have had my posters up in them, um, and so I've just taken them back. And when I moved to New Jersey and into a house where I can actually access all my stuff, I'm going to photograph everything, and then I'm going to do some kind of exhibition for sure because i mean oh, yeah. i have crazy stuff and the the bands all borrow stuff from me now um which is great so pink floyd and rolling stones and alice and uh, uh and elton and so it's fun i mean i, I have it, it's a real passion of mine um my husband says it keeps me off the street <laughs> um, <laughs> you know because i'm like on ebay and i'm looking online and i'm talking to people and you know um uh and it makes me really happy. And it's a connection to music and it's a connection to my childhood. Um, and it's, a, it's a, been a connection to work. I mean, the, the crazy thing for me is uh, that I've gotten to work with my childhood heroes. Like not just meet them, but work with, with Elton and Alice and Steve Miller. And you know, that's, in, and it's insane. I mean, I, I wish I had gotten it. to meet you uh, with Steve Miller at the show. I mean, I'm such a oh, Steve Miller band was, you know, he's so was, shy. I know I could see that. I, I was like, oh, come on. We should go back, you know, and tell him how much we loved it because we just fucking loved it. I oh, mean, they gave you. out lighters. Do you remember that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, They gave yeah. out big like big lighters with Rock of Ages on it. And we were actually standing up like, ah, you know, <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, it was a 
and I sent a ton of people to it because oh. it well, thank really, and, and I mean this in the nicest way, the first five minutes of it, I just thought, oh God, cheesy. <laughs> and then it, 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 you flipped it. Yeah. You know, it had heart, like, like you were saying before. Well, thank hey, you. Hey, Rob. Yeah. Hey, Rob. Um, yeah, I got two things. One, you already answered my one question because I was telling Stefan, you know, he was calling me and asking me stuff about you. I said, oh, you got to ask Rob about he's got all of his posters in Barbados down by Ground Zero. The big yeah. store had all the really good stuff. I thought the best posters. Down yeah. In New York City. The, the but CBGBs, I, I know, yeah. I didn't know you took it all. Um, took it all. No, not CBGBs. The big one in that underground mall that really. We went mall. to that together. That was that had a lot of good ones too. Yeah, oh, you're no good, um, Eric. You, you would have killed my interview. It's a good thing I didn't even pay attention. Hold, right on, your- hold oh. on, but I want to get to the other thing because right. uh, Rob, Rob was ta- did Rob. You know, you got to go back to the beginning, Rob. When you told me the story about when you were a kid and you called up Journey's office yeah. to go meet Herbie Herbert. You know, yep. it's like you're like another almost famous kind of. Yeah, what's the whole story with that, Rob? Famous. Yeah, I just wasn't writing for Rolling Stone, which is better. So what's the uh, whole story, your beginning of, of Rob Roth? What's a the... friend of mine took me to go see Steep Journey uh, on the departure tour in 1980. Mm-hmm. Uh, I knew like any way you wanted. That was the that was the single that was out. But on the our little pocket of the country, the Northeast here, they weren't huge yet. They were playing Nassau Coliseum, and it was like 80% sold out. Uh, and it was like seeing Barbra Streisand for me. I mean, I just was flat out floored by him. His voice. So that was on a Saturday. It was Saturday, August 8th, 1980. On Monday, I called Columbia Records. I'm like, hey, I write for my high school newspaper. I want to meet Steve Perry. I want to interview him. And the woman said, yeah, you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're a, they're a big band. And I, and I was thinking quick. And I said, listen, every kid in there was 16 years old. What do you mean they're not going to talk to me? I am the reason why there is Journey. And she laughed and she said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to call their manager. He's going to say no, but I'm going to tell him what you said. And she called back about three hours later and she said, if you'll go to New Haven, Connecticut on Friday, you get you get 25 minutes with Steve Perry. And so I went up to New Haven and I met Pat Morrow, who was the road manager for Journey, a big, bald, mean looking guy, <laughs> but lovely though. Uh, and he said, Herbie, Herbie, this is the kid. This is the kid. And Herbie came up barreling down the hall. And he was huge, man, 300 pounds. You're, and he was going, you're fucking right. It's all about you. It's all about you. you know. And I love that you said that to Columbia Records. It's the best. And come meet Steve Perry. And so I met Steve Perry, who was very, very nice. Uh, and then I had a lot of questions being the nerdy theater geek kid that I was. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you move this? Like, I saw it on Saturday in... NASA Coliseum, you've done four shows and now it's Friday in New Haven. How do you, it's huge. How do you move it? And so he said, come on with me. And we went and we walked around. We went to all the different departments. He took me out into the parking lot with a security guy and we busted bootleg t-shirt people. (laughs) Um, And he said, listen, if you're really interested in this and you seem like you are, here's my card. Call me in San Francisco. You need to come to a load in. So that was on Friday. On Monday, I called uh, San Francisco and I was like, hey, could you put me in touch with Herbie, please? He gave me his card. I want to go to Virginia this week and go to the Loden. And I did. And they gave me a laminate and I was on all the journey tours from that time on. Oh, my God. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. It's insane. And and really saw a lot of rock and roll shit. They were the biggest band in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, I met them in 1980 and 1981 was Escape. Right, which had the five number one singles, and you know, great and, album, great album. Yeah, and I saw what that kind of fame can do to people. It was hard for them. I think it was very, very hard for Steve Perry. Clearly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and Herbie Herbert was the first of my rock manager idols, and so now I've gotten to work with John Reed, who was Elton John's manager for from the, through the seventies through the nineties, uh, and Shep Gordon, who's managed Alice Cooper from the beginning till now. And Doc McGee, who manages Kiss and did Bon Jovi and Motley. And, you know, these guys are fucking brilliant. And they're the reason why these bands were so successful. And there's a big, that's John Reed and Doc. Um, and they're like my idols. And they're Shep and John Barbados. Nice, John. Uh, that's a great picture, yeah. But the managers are like my idols. Like I, I and they, because I was in, genuinely interested in the business of rock music, they, 
told me the truth uh, about it. So that's been really fascinating. And I'm very grateful to all those guys uh, for kind of letting me peer into their world. I think that if I wasn't bitten by the theater bug, I might have been a manager. Really? You know, it's, it's interesting that you found that m more accepting. You know, if you were like, hey, I'm 17, I write for my my high school paper, I'm a singer, I want to yeah. meet Steve Perry, <laughs> I I'm, a write I'm a songwriter, they would have been like, uh, <laughs> you know, but the fact that you were interested in the other side of it, the, 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 the internal mechanism, the, the load in, the, uh, the sort of, you know, uh, the wizard behind the curtain yeah. sort of, uh, vibe of it is, uh, was sort of your in and that's that's really yeah. a beautiful awesome thing because you know even in talking to young performers uh, now and aspiring everyone wants to be a broadway star mm -hmm. and i'm like look right. let's not let's not shoot for that let's just get you one percent better today you know let's just <laughs> yeah. let's i'd rather i'd rather you shoot for you know play the long game and the slow burn uh because frankly being a broadway star is great and all but you only get to be in a few shows every That's so it. often because you can't be in every show back to back you know if you you'd, you'd be more valuable if you could be well-rounded and do a lot of things well and now you know uh, more than ever you have to write direct sing act you have to produce your own shows and you do you know so you got to do a little of everything so that's a great story for the young people that are listening out there you know um the, mo know, the be, moral be proactive of, you know the, uh, well, I'm gonna say, the moral of the story is and the moral of my whole career in show business is ask mm -hmm. ask all that can happen is that people say no to you which right. believe me happens to me all the time, way more than people say yes to me. But the people that have had that have said yes to me are the Walt Disney Company and doing a Broadway show, their first Broadway show, and Chef Gordon letting me direct an Alice tour, and Doc McGee and Paul Stanley and Gene inviting me into the Kiss world. Like, um, yeah, you know, asking is worth it. Yeah. And the the no, that's our new logo without the stuff you put around it. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the getting told no is momentarily painful. Getting told yes is like years of delight. <laughs> and so I think it's worth it is, is something that I try to tell well, everybody that will listen. Rob? That's awesome. Rob, I was going to say, yep. what you said, that's kind of like um, one of my mantras in life is that I tell everybody, you always should just ask. What's the worst that can happen? Somebody says no. But you'll never know unless you do ask questions for sure. that's how you gain knowledge that's how you get opportunity um i think everybody's so worried like you said the rejection can be so painful for sure. people that mm -hmm. they become gun shy as opposed to saying just keep going just keep going <laughs> also constantine will know this too from being an actor i'm sure getting told no gets less painful <laughs> the yeah. more you get told no <laughs> yeah <laughs> right? for sure you know it's like okay True. you just you're just next next, next. Yeah, Next, you yeah. just and you, hey, have, you have to feel that way. You have to just you have to shake it off. Um, yeah, uh, you know, tough skin and, uh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Because it's so and uh, it's so as long as you're doing good work, like if you're putting good deposits in the bank and the agent is still getting you appointments, you're getting great feedback. If you if you're not getting the part, it, there's so many other factors. That I was going to say, it's I not, tell my actor friends, you have no idea yeah. why you did or didn't get the part. You exactly. would you would be shocked if I told you yeah. the and, myriad things that go into it. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's that have nothing to do with you or your talent. And as long as you're not hearing, God, he was terrible. He wasn't prepared. And I just sure. can't work with someone like that. And I wouldn't recommend my friends working with someone like that. Unless you're hearing that kind of shit, just, just keep pushing and keep keep plowing ahead um you know because uh to even have people that believe in you is 90 mm percent -hmm. of the battle you know that, that get you true. in front mm -hmm. of people that can you know um put you in a okay. position to succeed and and to to be successful um, you, you know, said something yeah that i think is important though i bet you've never not been prepared i can, no, tell, I, yeah. I can tell from seeing you and stuff you've never not been prepared and yeah I think there, there was one time there was one time, bud, and uh, it. I think about it every day. 
Do you really? I, I think about it. And every it was day. worth it. No, well, it it so it was worth it. You feel like to fail to remind me to keep to maybe. To, yeah, I know, I know, but it does. It did affect me very much. And for, I'll I'll be honest, it was uh, um, it was for a huge show. It was, uh, and I just it was one of those moments where I, I don't know what happened. I I felt like I I was going in and we were going to have a work session, and I didn't. I, we were going to work on the material together, but it was like no, you stand over there and do it all for us. And uh, and I just I don't know what it was. Uh, well, that's and, not really fair. Think, they they didn't set you up properly. That's not really fair. Well, sure, but I honestly, I should have been, I should have been prepared. Um, I I knew better, and and it and it, I think about it every day, and that will never happen again. That I'm will sure. never happen again. And you know, it well, had never happened before that, but it was just one of those lapses. And uh, for Diane Paulus, you know, the director, big big I director, do. and. Um, and I know her husband really well. I know her really well. And every time I see her, I'm like, and she's like, stop it. Stop it. I love <laughs> you. You should stop be... it now. <laughs> I know. I know. But you know what? It, like, Randy, stick, stick Randy is one of the producers of Warhol Capote. And, okay. Diane, and Diane produced it at, um, there's our logo. Oh, cool. Nice. That's really cool. And Randy's nice. the best. He's like the king of uh, immersive. Uh, he's theater. so great. I just yeah. love him too. Yeah. Rob, what's you know, on? Wait, you know who else is really prepared? Wait, you know who else is really, really prepared? Eric Singer. All right. Oh, no. Oh, he's the heartbeat of every every show that I've directed. So I know we did, what, two or three Alice shows. And I worked on, I didn't direct, but I consulted or whatever they call me on mm -hmm. two KISS tours. Eric's the man with the plan. Yeah. The drummer like, has to be. If, everybody if you turns drummer, to Eric. What's going yeah. on now, Eric? And Eric knows every time. Every time. Especially those. Now, Eric, do you trigger, not to reveal too much of the behind the curtain, do you often trigger like the track uh, and such? There is no track. No, uh, well, okay. Um, <laughs> But well, like not like, I mean, like I'll give you an example. Alice aren't you is, guys aren't you guys on a on a click? Aren't you guys well, on, on a click grid. for all yeah, the because cues, of the cues, lights cues, of pyro. pyro? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. called the grid. It's called the grid. Yeah, with Alice we didn't do that. Um, but we, uh, as Rob will tell you, Alice has the thing. Like once the show starts, it's off and running. There's no break, um, and the drummer kind of has to control the pacing for the show. So you have to really know not only everything what everyone's doing, but you got to know what Alice is doing, where he's at at all times. Because Alice, you know, I, I was brought up playing in my father's band, so I was used to playing where you back up a singer, you back up a soloist, and all that. So I looked at Alice. I get what Alice does. He's he's taken like Broadway and incorporated it with hard rock, and I played Broadway show tunes growing up all the time. So I understood like that whole mentality. What Alice is doing is a show, and I figured you got to be a show drummer if that makes sense for those that don't know what that is. But you got to be able to still play the songs, but catch catch everything as it's happening and be in control. Like you're kind of the captain of the ship back there. Yeah, really no, are. for sure. I just assumed uh, nowadays with technology being what it is and the shows being as big as they are and the lights um being so queued up like that i assumed because i know a lot of big acts that do play over a, a track you know not Me too you know i mean some of the biggest acts in the world well, and, and they're playing live over the track but there is still a track underneath it so it's essentially the same show every night obviously with different in levels of energy and enthusiasm but um but every every cue is is triggered right. by by the click well, and what's on the yeah i'll just so, say this the, the like the wall when they hit start hit the button to begin the show that show if it's an hour and 20 minutes and 32 seconds it's that exact amount yeah, every yeah. single night because exactly like you said they have all these sound effects and core uh, yeah. you know lighting things going on that are completely coordinated to yeah. that are part of the show and it has to be on a grid it's, so it it's safety fun. yeah we, we call it the grid yeah the grid i got you the grid i like that and, yeah. and frankly it's just efficient and yeah. and when you're dealing with you know, pyro and everything. Yeah. It's just safer, I imagine, yeah. too. Now, everybody. We're not, we're not, we're not like that where we go like start the show and then everyone. It just no, it's not like that. Not but I, no, not at all. I mean, there, it's there has to be a looseness about it because it's a rock show where the 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 wall with Roger Waters. That's a production mm -hmm. show, if you will. It's really sure. about yeah. that. 
Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I did learn a lot on this last kiss uh, farewell tour um, from Robert Long um, and his team about how the lighting and pyro, wow, when it's on the grid, because uh, on Broadway, like on Beauty and the Beast and Aida and Lestat, we didn't use that. It was stage manager called the whole thing. Uh, and you can't, yeah, they call like on Kiss, thing, you, yeah. can't, you can't call it. It's, it's, there's too many cues to, for one person to go, 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 go. So um, the grid get, is a tool um, that you can really use uh, in a way that I've not done before. Uh, and I'm also, definitely also going to do it on Beauty and the Beast now in places. Mm -hmm. I think something that you have to consider is that all these other guys are not musicians. They're not, and not a lot of times they're not even musical, which means they don't have good necessarily the best timing or don't have an understanding of dynamics. So, so if you have guys calling cues for pyro stuff, I mean, these guys, you'll be like, go. And Gene will be like, right. you know, he, if you notice, you see Gene always lift his leg up with the bass. That came about from him giving pyro cues in the 70s. Absolutely. So like every move was like, Boom. And every move is big. You have to be very exaggerated. And Gene, uh, Paul told me a story that they had a guy, an older guy that was running pyro, and the guy kept missing the cues. And Gene went and started choking the guy out. <laughs> oh, God. After the show. And, and I'm sorry, during the show, because, you know, Gene is like a performance artist. He gets in character. He choked the guy out. After the wow. show, Paul said he went up to him and goes, Gene, you, you can't do that. That's an old guy. He goes, what are you talking about? Gene didn't even remember that he had done it. He went over and choked the guy for missing the cues. So, oh oh yeah. I'm glad he didn't come choke me yeah, when true. we fucked up, when but, things got so, fucked up. Did it get so, bad, Rob? <laughs> what? Did it get no, bad? You know uh, no, <laughs> it, it, it got great. Collaborating with Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons and Robert and Doc on Kiss was absolutely fantastic. And we changed – of a lot from what the everything. plan was. Rob, Rob, you changed everything. You came in. We came in on day one up in, was it Vancouver or where were we? It, it yeah. was Vancouver, yeah. yeah. And we came <laughs> in day one and Rob goes, okay, here's the show. He sets up the thing and he had a great idea, but it was very theatrical, but was probably more intimate type of approach. And everyone's like this. No. Nah. So Bob, basically these guys would go and huddle and they, you guys literally on the fly, which was, which was yep. cool about it, Mm -hmm. You guys just kind of like call an audible. Okay, let's do this. And they yep. kept, can we do this? Can we get this? Can we go stand on these pods? Okay, let's secure them. Can we come down? I mean, you lit, You guys literally on the fly completely changed the whole intro of the show. We, did. we changed the set list. We changed a whole lot of stuff. But, you know, I guess I'm used to doing that because, you know, musicals change. I mean, that's how you how they get made, as Constantine was talking about earlier and, and how they put together Rock of Ages. Mm -hmm. Um and um, so it was really fun. And Gene and Paul are, and Doc McGee too. They're super smart and passionate uh, and care about it. Like they want it to be great, not just good. They want it to be great and they want to be great. And all the artists that I've had the thrill of working with like Elton or Alice or Eric, um, it's the level of commitment to excellence is high and it's inspiring uh and you get great things from it you know uh and gene and paul also were open to being wrong as which is the best thing if you can go like oh that was an idea that of mine that wasn't so good let's try something else <laughs> you know um and I don't know, one of the things that I am mindful myself being the director of Broadway shows or concerts or everything is use the ideas of the genius people that you are lucky enough to be working with, <laughs> right? So just because you're the director of it doesn't mean you have to have every idea. And just because you're Paul Stanley doesn't mean you have to have every idea. And he's very open and gene too, to like, oh, that's better. Let's, oh, yes, let's do that. So, that you know, but, but Rob, but at the same time, let me stop you there. I think you okay. guys will all agree, Ed, you being a producer, you guys especially know being directors and producers, somebody has to earn your confidence. Yes, in other sure. words, you don't just walk in the room and go, oh, well, here's what I think we should do. It's like, uh, yeah, who are you? So I think you yes. show them through your professionalism, commitment, um, having, if you show up and having your 
end of the bargain together, then you've yep. shown them, okay, this guy's prepared. He's a pro. He takes it serious. So if he says something or has a point of view, I'm going to at least listen to him. I'm going to hear him out. And I think you have to earn people's respect. I agree. Um, and I've noticed through the years now, a lot of times, like Paul called me the other day, Rob, by the way, to show me some of the videos. And he goes, right. what do you think? And, you know, I tell him what I think. And he's like, I mean, the thing is cool is he'll kind of go, oh, interesting. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, because he's getting another perspective. And sometimes I'm going to see it differently. Um, of course. Being a drummer. I do. I see and hear things a little differently than maybe another sure. person. In the you band. also earn the respect over. But I was just going to say the fact that he will at least afford me my opinion. Yeah. Not about whether he agrees with mm -hmm. it or wants to even try sure. my idea. The fact that he'll listen. That's what I appreciate. Yep, I would agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, those kind of collaborations are the most exciting thing. It's the. And you you leave the rehearsal with something better than you planned often. And that's, you know, the most exciting times. I've had a lot of fun with you over these years. I guess I've been working with you for 20 years, Eric. Yeah. Wow. 20, 20 years. years. I, uh, wow. Yeah. I think so. Wow. Yeah, a yeah. long time. I met you in like a long time. Like 2000 or whatever it was, something. Yeah, were you yeah. around when did Brutal Planet? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was the. That was 2000. No, the one I did the one before that too. And then I That's did Blue right. Planet too. Yeah, that, that was the one with like, I don't know, we did like, um, well, you did one where we called it like Bare Bones, remember? Uh, yeah, I was after Bare Bones. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, you know, it's, I think I was around The Last Temptation of Alice, whatever that was. Yeah, I didn't do that. Right. I can't yeah. there, was, there they are. Look how cool Cheryl looks. She's amazing, isn't she? Yeah, she's amazing. I love her. I know. She's so cool, and she looks amazing, and she's such a nice I look person. really, really tired in that picture. That's a horrible picture. I should never have <laughs> well, said We, we that weren't you. looking at you. We were looking at Cheryl. You were looking at Cheryl. Yeah, but course, this, yeah. this is a great picture right here. Yeah, so this is where my worlds collide, right? Alice and Andy. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay, we're letting Constantine. He, he's, he's juicing up his phone because it sounds crappy. Seven, you headphones. need those glasses. <laughs> Seven, I need, need those glasses. glasses. Okay. Thank you. Thank Bob, you. Bob, you, you know what kind of glasses? Okay, hold on. Let, I do. They're see, anti Warhol see. brand glasses. They make them. I can get them. Can there you go, Stefan. Okay, really yeah, quick. I forget the name of the company now, but we use them for the play. Really? Those exact glasses, yeah. Those exact. I like those. They're like the Lennon glasses almost. Yeah, that's why I like them. Stefan, yeah. tell, tell yeah. Rob the Lennon glasses story about that I found you. That he found me. Yeah, yeah. Constantine, he's juicing up his phone. So everybody, don't get don't get alarmed. Don't get scared. Eric Singer did not scare him off. So <laughs> Eric found me these great glasses. Um, Jip, well, wait, Jip, tell him how the story started. You were trying to find the Well, John tell him. Guy. Tell him. You'd like to. Okay. Go ahead. You're Stephen in kids. Stefan loves John Lennon because he thinks he looks like him. But we, whatever. that's another okay. story. So anyways, he was looking for the glasses. So I said, let me call some friends in Japan. I knew they were made by a Japanese company. So my friend literally went to the store in Tokyo. Hirajuku area, and he said they don't, they will not sell the exact model that John Lennon wears. Mm -hmm. But there's other models that were around the same era that look almost the same. They're very close. So one day I'm in a store on Ventura Boulevard in Studio City, and I see these glasses. I'm like, oh my God, these look like the ones that Stefan wants. I go, hey, let me see those. I look at the brand. They're the original old vintage glasses with the case. Almost wow. Like yeah. So I bought them. I think they were like three hundred dollars. I go, Stefan. I call. I think I Facetimed you, and I go, Stefan. Are these them? You're like, yeah. Oh my god. So I bought them. Stefan took them. We got them prescription lenses mm -hmm. installed, and uh, the rest is history. That's it. The rest yeah, is history. Cool. Now, now, Rob, I want to ask you. Well, Constantine is charging up his phone behind you. I want to know about the Queen, the guy right behind okay. you, right there. So oh, let me get out of the way. This is. One of 10 Tower Records London, 1977, three-dimensional robots. He's made out of plastic. Um, it would hold albums, but I have all sorts of other Queen memorabilia in there. Um, this one came from Mary Austin. Mary Austin was Freddie Mercury's life partner. Mm -hmm. right. uh, and Mary was willed uh, most of Freddie's estate. Um, and then she sold this, um, and it's in really good condition and it's one of my prize wow. possessions and yeah, I'm a news of the world. I mean the album too, but the graphics, the whole mm -hmm. thing. It's a um, great, it's such a great album. Wow. Great it's such a great album. 
And did you like when the what's his name Adam Lambert came out riding on the robot's head? Or yeah, something? I did. I think Adam what, Lambert really? is ballsy as hell to do that. You know what's crazy? When I, mean, I saw the show the first time of that tour when they had the robot, yeah, I saw him on Hollywood Bowl, and they couldn't, as you know, because of production right. and the hanging points for rigging. Um, they couldn't put the bring the robot in, and we didn't get to see the big guitar stage. We didn't see that in LA. Wow. No, nobody knew it until you went and saw them at the forum. Right. Yeah, really good. Good design. Yeah, really good. Okay, let's see how if Constantine if he if he could make it and without any tech because he is a guy who did a Queen song on American Idol too. He did a great job. Here he is. All right. Hmm. We're here. Hopefully, he's here with us. You always have at least one guest with bad internet. It's okay. You have a lava lamp, Eric. Yeah, he's having. You know, he's having. Eric, show me your lamp over there. In in the meantime, Ed Stasium. Hello, darlings. We're gonna get. Uh, uh, We've just talked right over Ed. We just. I've been listening. You guys have been great. Oh, very nice. It's a a yellow. It's a Beatles yellow submarine lava lamp. See, there's the top. Oh, that's awesome. I've never seen one of those. Now, Rob, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, I've been enjoying, thoroughly enjoying all of, all of your stories, and I had no idea that you this incredible collector and what amazing stuff you have. But how did you track down those Warhol tapes? Yes, let's get into that story right how, here. This how, is did a, you, um, how did you hear about them? You, yeah. did, you must have done de- detective work. Yeah, to- uh, I was on this Rosie O'Donnell cruise in my room reading the Andy Warhol diaries. There was the one line in the diaries that says, yeah. you know, I exactly. went to his apartment. I got yeah. off the cruise. I Hold called. on, Jimmy Fallon just came on the show. There is. <laughs> uh, I uh, I had been buying Andy Warhol penis art. Okay. Um, what does that he, mean? Uh, he drew a lot of cocks. <laughs> um, and for you know, and so I have like I have twenty of them. Oh my god. Uh, and I was having them authenticated by the Warhol Foundation mm-hmm. when they were authenticating. Mm-hmm. And I met this guy named Vincent Fremont. Vincent Fremont was Andy's right-hand man for 25 years. The right-hand man, okay. Yep, right-hand man. And so when I got off the cruise, I called Vincent and I said, hey, in the diaries, he says he was making tapes for a play, Vincent. What was that? And he said, oh yeah, they were talking about doing a Broadway play. I mean, who knows? He recorded everything his entire life for 10 years oh my god with a sony walkman in his jacket oh my god and when he died they found four thousand cassettes it's amazing so he hoarded cassettes in his he hoarded it yeah yeah and then the lawyers when he died just decided you know what this is so risky because it's illegal in new york state uh, it was in the 70s and 80s to record surreptitiously. Okay. There's all these famous people that he was hanging around with. They were doing God knows what. <laughs> you know, you know, Rob, by the way, Rob, it's not illegal anymore in New York. But it it's is. Not so wait a second. Hold on, Eric. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Uh, so, all right. So, all right. so uh, they told me that the tapes were at the Andy Warhol Museum, but they were under embargo <sighs> until 50 years after his death, which is 2037. Wow. So they just rejected my request. And yeah. then I went home. I got told no, right? I was dejected. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, wait a minute. Truman knew he was being recorded yeah. because they were making tapes for a play. That should change it, right? That these particular tapes, they both knew they were being recorded. So I went back to the uh, Joel Walks, who was the president of the foundation the andy Warhol foundation for the arts and i said joel i hate to bug you but truman knew he was being recorded and so he went back to the board and john waters the filmmaker yeah and Mm. um uh cindy sherman the photographer were on the warhol board and they felt very strongly that i should be granted access and they spoke up uh and so the lawyers came back with this crazy list of demands. The number one being that w- would be that I would indemnify the Warhol Foundation from any lawsuits arising from these tapes. So I just thought, well, my lawyer's never going to let me do that. Right. And when I called my lawyer and he thought about it, he came back and he said, nope, we should sign it because you don't know 
if you're going to find the tapes. You don't know what's on the tapes. You don't know if you can make the tapes a play. And you don't know that what you're going to put in the play is libelous. So there's all these hoops to jump through before you're going to get sued. Do it. So I did. Excellent. Uh, wow. And they, they let me look at 4,000 tapes. Wow. Could not play them. I could just, I could hire someone to look at them. They were, archivist. They were labeled. Uh, they were, well, haphazardly, no dates. Really? Um, but 59 of them said Truman ah. in Andy's handwriting. And so they let me have those 59 tapes wow. to digitize and then have bonded court reporter transcriptions, which wow. means that the, the transcription company legally stands behind the transcription like they're, they're liable if it's not exactly what's on the tape. Gotcha. Uh, wow. And so I got 8,000 pages of transcripts and 59 90-minute cassettes, and I put on headphones, and I listened. The tapes were not in any order, so it was just haphazard. That took about a year, a little bit more than a year. Mm -hmm. um, and Amazing. slowly, in my mind, I started linking pieces together. Like, oh, wait, they talk about Marilyn Monroe over here. And then wow. later they talk about her again. I'm going to combine that into one conversation. I'm going to... You know, I pulled stuff from across the tapes. Brilliant. Uh, to make it be a conversation, which uh, with the help of Michael Mayer and two really brilliant actors, um, I massaged into what is Warhol Capote now. Um, uh, and it's going to be published in hardcover from Simon & Schuster. So uh, it's, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just been a long wow. road, but it came from asking. Yes. It yeah. came from asking. Wow. wow. I know it's... I, it, I'm repeating myself, but it's true. No, that, that's very good advice because I never asked and I should have asked many times. And, you know, in retrospect and, and what I've done, you know, if I had asked, <laughs> if I had asked in, in, in certain ways, inquired about projects, I probably would have gotten a little somewhere on those particular projects. And I can put that into effect right now. I'm not, yeah. I'm having, right. You know, I'm I think I over ask now. Like yeah. I have an idea. I'm on the phone. I'm like, hey, Jimmy Page. <laughs> You know, and I get told no. Yeah, a lot. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll ask right now. Hey, Paul Stanley, I want you on the show. So do the right thing, okay? I'll <laughs> ask right now. <laughs> there it is. You got to ask. You doesn't if hurt I to don't ask. Walk my dog. My dog will explode. Okay. I'm Bob, sorry to say, this is so enjoyable. Hey, had... Constantine, can I get your email from them? Who didn't hear me? I don't think you, you got You didn't ask the right tone. That's the course, problem. Please. You didn't ask. Oh, I have the team. I'd love to stay in touch with all of you guys. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, you know what I'll do, Rob? I'll get you all the information. Yeah, Ed, I'd like to stay in touch with awesome. you too, please. I'd love to. Love to. Yeah, man. This was so great. I'm I'm sorry to duck out now, but like uh, it's beyond my, our time, and the dog's gonna die. No, go ahead, go, Rob, Rob. Get out of here. What, what we can have a too. Okay. What kind of what kind He's of a Labrador retriever. He's a okay, Rob, bag. Okay, <laughs> Rob, Rob Roth. It was a pleasure to have you here, my friend. Hey, everybody, I want to thank, thank you. you it was a really, much. really fun conversation. I really Rob, appreciate the time. You. Okay. Good All to see right. you too, Eric. I'll be seeing you soon. All right, Rob. Great to meet you. Thank you for asking me, Stephen. I appreciate it. Uh, you no problem. I'll Great. send you everybody's information too, Rob. Thank you, thank you. And, and good luck. And thank you for the whole stories about Truman and Andy. We love it. And your story. Thank you, thank you so much, buddy. Have Thanks. a good one. Bye, Rob. everybody. All right. Bye, Rob Roth. There he goes. Get him out of here. All right. He's out. All righty. Wow, what a great story! Great, what yeah. great stories, Constantine. You know, wow, this is great. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't get to talk to anybody in your realm. You know, I'm in recording studios. I've been there for you know, 48 years or so. So uh, you know, I don't know anything about Broadway and hearing your story. It's very inspiring, man. Yeah. And, uh, it was and, definitely, definitely inspiring. Definitely a great message well, behind. Thank you, man. The saga. Both you guys. Stephen Constantine, do people think you look like Jimmy Fallon? The saga sometimes? continues. Wu Tang. Wu Tang. That's right. That's right. You know, we will do. A, you know what? We'll do a part two, Constantine. What we'll do is with the sound better because we have the delay now. We'll, we'll come. We'll do a part two of, of this. We'll, we have to bring you back and talk again. Um, Eric Singer, I like That'd your name, Shop Night Singer. Yeah, yeah. But hold on, right here, Constantine. Hold on. I'll call you afterwards. But Ed Stacy, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, Shop Night Singer, thank you for being here. I like that. All righty. And uh, everybody in the chat, I want to thank you guys for being here. Ed, anything you want to say? Any goodbyes to anybody really quick? Oh, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah, we, 
Yeah, yeah, we we love you guys. We love yeah. you guys. But yeah. you know what? Another good talk and wax round table with everybody. What great stories, man. He had the statue from the Zeppelin. That's crazy. It's crazy. The five yeah. the tapes. How about the conversations? I wanted to go deeper and ask more about these conversations. Like Andy would just walk. Where's the actual where's the, the cassette player? I want to know that he walked around. Like those are the things that I, I'm like geeking out about, you know. The the watchman. The Sony watch. I do well, love it. Rob and Mayor, that's a that's a that's a dynamic duo. So they're gonna they're gonna kill it. Yeah, they'll do good on that. that uh, place it was, it was great because I got the Michael Mayer's a great director. Mm -hmm. Really good. But I want to you know what? Delay, man. It's, it's okay for the delay, but you know, Constantine, your new record's out over here. I want to really quick, I want to show everybody out there. I have the link. Go check it out. It's actually kicks ass. It's great record. Check his new record out until I'm wanted. Click on the link, love it, like it, and um, I want to thank you guys for being here tonight. Great, great episode, Constantine. Thank you. Great episode of, of uh, talk. And I want to thank George for doing the artwork of Constantine right here. He did a great job over there, George. Thank you very much, and a uh, lot of fun tonight. All right, everybody, we're out of here. Uh, so long, and have a good night, everybody. Bye. Talking wax. Uh -huh.